What's up going on guys? Did you know that 8% of American renters are not paying their rent? This report came out in December of 2021. So what is going on with so many Americans unable to pay their rent in what's considered a low unemployment environment? This is setting the stage for the next recession. The last time we had this many delinquent renters was 2006. And we know what happened after 2006. So we're gonna talk about that and a lot more. And I'm gonna give you the reasons that this is happening and how you can potentially protect yourself or some decisions that you possibly don't want to make. Also, this is brought to you by glendoncameronschool.com. I'm still setting up the URL, but essentially we're beginning the new training URL. But essentially we're beginning the new training. Live training starts this Sunday, 4 p.m. It's Monday, so I'm giving you a lot of heads up on this. So what we're gonna be doing is the first foundational training of home economics. And what's gonna happen with this module, cause there'll be home economics is the foundational module and there'll be three other modules. And what will happen as we go to the second module and the third module and the fourth module, whatever you pay for the first module or the second module will be deducted from your future price of the additional module. So you won't be paying for the information two and three times. So the link is below, go ahead and get in there. And we have our first live training 4 p.m. this Sunday. All right, so let's get into what is going on. What is causing so many people to be delinquent? First thing and the most important thing is inflation. Depending on where you are in the country, rent has gone up 10 to 35% with your 35% increases in your dense metropolitan areas. So if you live in a city with a lot of people, you've seen dramatic rental rate increases. And I'm talking 300, 400, 500 to 1,000 bucks per month over what you were paying last year. Now, what is causing this inflation? Investors. You might even be an investor. There's not all these cash investors, there's a lot of people who will like, hey, I'm gonna get me a rental property and I'm gonna put me a rental in there and I'm gonna go out and get me a mortgage on this rental property. Uh, depending upon your credit and income, you can float anywhere from four to possibly 10 rental properties with traditional financing. When you get to alternative financing, the, the sky's the limit with that. But what is happening? I'm gonna tell you what's happening and we're gonna make a radical little departure here. Remember when I told you guys about template businesses? Template businesses will be soon saturated. This is happening with Toro. This is happening with Airbnb. These businesses are being flooded and they're saturated because when information hits the public domain, it hits the public domain. So every Tom, Dick and Harry Anyone with a decent FICO score and a little extra money is buying a house and they're trying to slap a renter in there. So this is creating a bubble. And this is one of the things like, the recession is still on. I already made the video the other day talking about 685,000 people, uh, 685,000 new jobs created, and it didn't matter. Now, once again, these new jobs have been created Yet these people are still, the renter delinquency rate is going up. It's going up. So one of the primary causes for this rental delinquency is inflation and the inflation is fueled by investor activity. Now, I'm about to go a little strange with this next point. You got someone, they're living in a rental apartment, they're living in a rental house, and they know rent is due. And they have the opportunity to go out and get one of these 
low wage jobs. Okay. And they've done the math. And this is where I think a lot of people are and many people are going to get to there. Even if they go out and work this low wage job, they still will not be able to pay their rent. So instead of having to slave at a job that you hate, they're just like playing the waiting game, playing the waiting game. Because what I feel is going to happen is as more and more people become delinquent, the uh, eviction courts are going to get full. And normally, like I remember literally years ago here in Atlanta, when I lived in the apartment, because uh, I haven't lived anywhere where I've actually seen an eviction in recent years, but we have to go way, way, way back. And first of the month, these people's stuff was on the lawn because that's what they used to do. They used to come move your stuff out of the apartment and put it on the lawn in the middle of the day. And then people would come over and cherry pick your stuff and they would go through your stuff. Uh, I hear that what they do is the sheriff comes with movers and they move it and they, I don't know where they move it, but I feel that many people are playing the waiting game. They're like, they know what's going on, but they just don't have the money and they're going to get as much free rent as possible. Or they may have one of these low wage jobs and they're going to work every day and they're just not paying the rent and they're saving their money because they know what's coming. This is where I think a lot of people are because once again, in the video, crappy jobs, uh, these jobs don't pay nothing. So they can keep creating all of these crappy jobs and these crappy jobs don't afford you the ability to drive a decent car, doesn't afford you the ability to live in a decent place and you're working and many of these people have two or three of these crappy jobs and they're working, you know, 75, 80 hours a week and they still can't make ends meet. So I think that a lot of people have taken that calculus and then there are some people who are just like, hey, I can't pay the rent. It's, it is what it is. And once again, like I said, and I've had some people come here and talk about Nostradamus. We've had all this record um, job creation. Okay. All you folks who are talking about this record job creation. If we have the economy is so-called booming, why do we have the highest renter delinquency rate since 2006? You know, y'all guys, you know, a lot of guys appreciate the economic analysis and a lot of guys want to throw rocks and stones at the screen. And also gas, gas has had a 50% increase and every time that has happened, we've had a recession. Inverted yield curve. We've had an effect. I don't know. We've got the inverted yield curve. We've got rising gas prices. We have historical inflation across the board with rent, uh, housing prices, food and gas. But we ain't gonna have no recession. It's like that little meme of the dog sitting in his house and the house is on fire. And it's like, it's fine. It's fine. And I feel that that's where many of y'all are. The house is literally burning down and you're just sitting in there talking about it. it's fine. Now, what's going to happen to all of these investors? Once again, template businesses, template businesses. Just like I have a friend, someone I personally know that bought like 12 houses for Airbnb. It was good in the beginning, but as the stimulus money left the economy and we were left with a naked economy, they're, they're literally selling these houses. And fortunately for them, they bought these houses two years ago. So they're able to actually make money because uh, I was talking to him and he said they sold four houses and the money that they've made off the four houses, if they wanted to, they could easily pay the rent for the uh, eight that they still have without Airbnb money for about a year. That's how much money they made. But he says, we're gonna to continue to sell and sell and sell. And then there he's talking about, he's talking to a CPA. Uh, the selling of these properties is gonna trigger a capital uh, gains tax. And this is something that they've got to contend with because they're making so much money. But just like these people who got in the 
template business of Airbnb. And just like so many people who got in the template business of car rentals, I'm one of the people who got in the template business of renting cars. And what am I doing? I'm selling my cars. I'm exiting the market because the market has literally collapsed. I don't know if Hire Cart is renting all of these cars or that many people have left the platform. Because I went and looked the other day and I saw only four pages. I don't know if it's that busy. I have no clue. But I feel based upon what happened to me in eight months that a lot of people are leaving the platform. So they're leaving Hire Car. And like I said, there are many people who bought these additional vehicles. Now they're in the position where they're going to sell. And like today, uh, I've came to a conclusion because I've been trying to sell these cars and I feel that the cars that I could sell close to what I paid for them, I've already sold. And these renters have beat these cars up. So now I am in a, it's like years and years ago, this is a little departure and I'm going to talk about my form of business. Um, being in the storage auction business, I met a guy by the name of Danny and he had this wonderful little phrase. Stack it deep and sell it cheap. Stack it deep and sell it cheap. And I actually listened to him and I would like literally cram my, my booths with merchandise. And I would come, like I would cram them with merchandise like Friday night and then Saturday I would come in and half my booths would be empty because I, it was stacked deep and I was able to sell it so cheap because I was getting my merchandise for pennies on the dollar. Now, this is something that I am not going to be able to do with, well, I can do the option. I will tell you something that I was almost going to do Saturday because I wanted to move this car. I had a car that had an emissions problem. It was wrecked and it had a gas leak. And I was literally going to give it away. And some said, don't give it away. Stack it deep and sell it cheap. So I listed the car for $3,500. 2 hours later, it sold. So I got to go through my inventory. And once again, I'm selling the worst cars first because the nicer cars, cars, you know, like the Acura TL. I feel that, you know, if I can sit on that long enough, I can get close to what I paid for it because that car is in still really good condition. But what you're going to see with these people, these real estate investors, they're going to have to sell these houses cheap. Some people are going to have to sell these houses at a loss because they're not able to make money. So this with the Airbnb people buying houses to rent out with the people who are getting into real estate, like literally you will see how many YouTube channels are dedicated to real estate investing. There's tons like this dude, Morris Invest, um, Bigger Pockets. Uh, there's so many YouTube channels aimed at investing in real estate. Uh, Spencer Cornelia, he's in real estate. So there is a ton of information for anyone who wants it to get into real estate. Whether you want to do wholesaling, I have a friend who does wholesaling. Whether you want to uh, flip, buy distressed property, fix it up, or buy retail and then rent it out, or put it on Airbnb. So all of these pressures and forces are creating the stage for some very nasty consequences. Uh, like I really watched 10 channels that were saying, don't buy a house in 2022 literally urging people, begging people, pleading with people, because they say you buy a house in 2022, you're gonna overpay. And when the market correction comes, you can literally be upside down. This is something that happened 2007, eight, nine, 10. I was dating an attorney and her house lost. She was upside down $150,000 on her house. And you know, and she was just like, you know, she, she had a good job. Her job was secure. And she's like, you know, I'm paying it, but I can't sell it for what I owe on this house. And, you know, and I told her, I said, look, just ride this thing out. You, you, you got to move. You got somewhere to be. You thinking about leaving the state? She said, no, I said, just ride it out. And more than likely in 10 years, you'll be good. 
and that's what she did. And recently she was able to sell her house, which she held on to it and she kept paying the mortgage. And then she was able to sell her house for a premium because of the crazy market. So that's where a lot of people are going to be. You're going to have to hold on to that house for about, she held on to that house more than 10 years. She held on to that house about 14 years when she got in a position where she could sell it and make money. And this is what happened because real estate is a cycle. It's an up cycle, it's a down cycle. So once it goes down, it's gonna go back up, but it's gonna take years. It's gonna take years. So let's talk about the economic factors that are happening right now. We have a 100% naked economy. There's no stimulus money. The stimulus money is the reason that a lot of this stuff is happening. The stimulus money created an artificial, fake ass, alternative reality economy that wasn't sustainable because like the number of people, like there's tons of YouTube, like I'm leaving Turo, I'm selling my Turo fleet. A lot of people are leaving Turo, a lot of people are leaving Airbnb. And without the stimulus money to stimulate the economy, they're dealing with naked, real market forces. And this is one of the things like, you know, once again, I'm a businessman and fortunately I'm able to take $150,000 in depreciation last year for the rental car fleet and take about $35,000 in losses. Now, this is something that's funny. I got called by a police officer the other day for a car that apparently is on the side of the road. And this would be the Range Rover. And he's like, you know, come get it or I'm gonna put the sticker on it and it's gonna get towed. Now, here's the thing. I've already received a check for the stolen Range Rover and I've already turned the title in to the company. So I'm just gonna let them tow it and I'm gonna let them deal with it because there's nothing I can do with that car. And once again, this is one of the reasons that I got out of the rental car business is renters will do shit. They will just do stuff. Uh, they'll put the wrong size tire on. They will like keep your car and not pay for you, pay for it. They will play games. I feel that this chick did something. I don't know what they did, but he called me and I don't know what the car is. I'm not even going to get it. I'm not messing with it because I've already received that check and I have cashed that check. That check has been cashed, so uh, whatever happens is what happens. But once again, you know, a lot of people are talking about the economic analysis. And one of the things I'm gonna get into with home economics is how to do this analysis so how you can read the economy because there's a lot of people who are now, we like, we were supposed to have this U-shape or this V-shape recovery, like boom, then boom, right? V-shaped recovery didn't happen. And now we're having um, inflationary because uh, the Fed is supposed to be creating, raising interest rates dramatically. So let's go ahead and look at the table. So we have all of these real estate investors who bought houses that people can't afford. Then we now have the Fed raising interest rates. That is a recipe for disaster. So let's say that you went in and you got your rental properties before the Fed raised the interest rates, but you can't get what you want for rent. So this puts you in a precarious position because you're now, your personal credit is on the line for this house that you bought to participate in the real estate market. And what is unsustainable, people cannot pay these dramatically hiked up rent rates. People just can't. So you are an existing in an unsustainable market. So two things are gonna happen. You're gonna lower your rent and just barely be art like this happened. I know someone that was renting a house for less than what their mortgage so they could defray the cost of their mortgage. They were renting that house, their mortgage was like 2,700 and they were renting the house out for 2300 because that's all they could get. And it was better to 
only pay 400 on the mortgage versus paying the whole 2700 so a lot of people are going to find themselves in that position it's like i got this mortgage and then for the people who buy after today because right now uh false narratives are really really big once something gets out into the public domain whether it's good information or not is in the public domain and once it's out there it's out there so we're going to have people who are still going to be buying houses we're going to have people who are still going to be trying to flip houses we're going to still have people buying retail houses i don't care how expensive they get you're going to have someone that's going to buy these houses and anyone who's buying a house to rent to flip is playing a very dangerous game at the moment because you don't know when the market's going to tank and let's say you bought a house to flip you got the house for ninety thousand. you got a hard money hard money loan where you're paying like the 12 basis points and then the market flips so you expected to put maybe forty thousand in this house and sell it for 280 now you can only sell it for 170 and because of your carrying cost and the cost of money this deal you make no money so it's going to be really really dicey from here on out because um i kind of was dabbling in playing around the real estate I actually did some stuff that i didn't talk about and i actually got in on this house that was a flip and I was the money man and I had a partner who did the work. And I'm gonna tell you, if it wasn't for the car rental business, that would have been my second worst investment because we did get the house finished, we did sell it. And I'll, I'll tell you, I was into this house for about 250,000 and then another 100,000 in rehab and I made $10,000. I was like, I am not doing this ever again because uh, we had issues with, we had plumbing issues, we had foundational issues. And for me to be out of 350,000 and to only make a $10,000 return, pretty much sucked. And um, the dude's been like, hey man, I found some more houses. It's like, I ain't doing that no more. Uh, one of the things I am doing is staying away from businesses that I, I know nothing about. Like if someone comes to me, it's like, hey, Glendon, you got this great investment opportunities. If you put the money up, I'll do the work You provide them. Deuces, uh, I'm, I'm like, I am not putting out any more money in any new ventures that I don't know anything about. Because, you know, I had the car business going on. And like I said, I didn't tell y'all about this. And we, we just had so many problems with flipping a house. And I kind of wish I had documented it because it was a nightmare. And this went on for about six months. And we finally got it sold. And we sold the house in this inflated market. But guess what? Because of the cost overruns, because the foundation issue, uh, we didn't even know that was like an additional thirty thousand dollars to fix the foundation correctly and get it to pass inspection and then we had electrical issues and then we had plumbing issues and this is once again the stuff that people don't really be telling you about it's like hey we're doing this refund you know we ran the numbers we're going to put forty thousand in there you buy a house that needs repair you have no clue to what you're getting and like i said i didn't lose money but for the time, and once again, I didn't really have to deal with the aggravation because I was just a money partner. And, um, you know, he made 5,000 for six months of work. We made a profit of 15,000. And I took 10 because I put out so much money and, you know, he wants to do it again. And I'm just like, I am out, I am out, I am out, I am out. So once again, I can tell you from experience that playing these real estate games and not being really experienced can potentially backfire on you. It can potentially backfire on you. And once again, if you notice at the beginning of the video, I'm going back to my core business. 
my core business has less risk, has less issues, and I'm pretty good at it. So that's where I'm going to stick to because I'm, I've exposed close to a million dollars in investment in these businesses where the return, like the car rental business, it didn't make any money. It didn't make any money. And what I'm going to, what, what I experienced in the car rental business and what I experienced on this real estate deal, many people are going to experience similar things because as the economy crashes and as prices collapse, a lot of people are going to get holding the bag. They're not going to secure the bag. They're going to be left holding the bag. And a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money. I, I really predict that. And we may enter the first phase of the recession fourth quarter of this year. Now, a recession is officially two consecutive quarters of negative growth. So I feel that, you know, look at it. Cause once again, all you guys are like, Hey, Nostradamus, you know, you keep preaching all this doom and gloom. And I just know the economic facts. I know the economic realities of what's happening. And it is just spelling recession. This, especially this thing with gas. Gas is very real. Cause see gas prices don't just affect you. Gas prices increases affect everything. Gas prices increases affect the price of eggs, the price of milk, the price of cheese, the price of meat. Gas price in, in the cost of TVs. It, cause it pushes up delivery and transportation costs of everything of everything so once again um i am not messing around with no more of these uh so-called surefire businesses propagated by youtube this is two times i have been burned by the youtube algorithm of like well hey you know that's the business to do and this is you know and also i feel that this is um was really good for me because as an educator as a teacher because see i am one of the few people on youtube that would actually tell you the truth about a business and like because once again uh, i do well once again moist men alert moist men alert go ahead and but start bragging i do well and i don't need your views and youtube money to make money don't need it so I am grateful for that and that way I can be fully transparent and honest with you and you know I didn't document the house thing because the car thing was like it took so much out of me and like right now uh, I've come to a realization that I'm gonna have to sell these cars cheaper than I want to just to move them because I had a guy looked at one car and because the car had over 100,000 miles his bank wouldn't finance it so this is another issue that I'm starting to run into. And once again, uh, fortunately, I'm gonna take $180,000 uh, in write downs from last year. And then this year, I'm probably gonna take close to 300K in losses. So that's gonna give me $480,000 in deductions. And that's going to get me I don't even know when I pay the taxes. I gotta look at that. But that's gonna get me all of my tax money back. So that's gonna be about 150. I gotta look at, I gotta look at what my taxes are because my taxes on 350K is about 125. Uh, most of that is federal. That's gonna be like 70. 70 last year, 70 this year, that's 140. And I'm going to be able to sell the cars because like, I'm not going to get 400K for it. I already know that. So I'm probably, if I can get 250, because I'm already at like 80. And I feel I have enough cars where I can get 250. So between the tax money coming back and what I get from selling the cars, that's gonna give me my 400K back. And I gotta work for it. There is nothing worse than working hard to not make money. It absolutely sucks. 
And that's one of the reasons that I was so vocal because I know that a lot of people got really tired of me talking about how I hate the car business. But this is the first realized loss because even though I'm gonna get my 400K back, when you factor in time, effort, resources, at one point I had an assistant. So you factor in her, you know, I'm not gonna lose a lot of money, but I'm gonna lose a little bit of money. I'm gonna lose a little bit of money. And I'm trying to get my losses down to about 10, 20,000. That's not horrible, but you know, cause just looking at it, yeah, I'm gonna lose a little money. And it was a good lesson for me because as I can become your educator and, tell, and once again, there's a lot of people on YouTube who would never actually like, I consider this, Two L's, and I'm gonna explain why I consider it two L's. I am used to creating products that make six figures a month. So for me to put my hustle hand on two different business models and make no money with one, absolutely make no money in the other one to only realize 10,000 after putting out, I mean, that's like dividend stock returns. I think 150, 12, no, dividend stock would have got me a greater return. Yeah, dividend stock on 350,000 would have got me about maybe 15. Yeah, dividend stock, would. Have, that's how bad these investments were for me. This is how bad they were for me. And one of the reasons I'm not doing them ever again. And fortunately, I consider myself fortunate to actually walk away from that real estate deal with a small profit. I consider myself fortunate because if you didn't know, one of my first businesses, GC Solution, uh, my first year I did like 250 because I was selling used for office furniture. And then my second year, I only made like $30,000 profit on revenues of 1.5 million because I made a lot of mistakes. I messed up a lot. So yeah, you know, we're going to get ready to cook. We're going to cook with some gas, but the real estate crash is coming. It's baked in because of real marketplace forces. It's baked in. It's just a matter of time. And once again, the real estate market is still going up. It is still going up. So we are a few months away from spring, which is a big time to sell house in spring. There's a lot of people who have children. They like to buy their house in the spring. So the school, the transfer, the school transfers can be seamless. So I feel that housing prices are going to go up a little bit more and then they're going to crash. And the last buyers, it's going to be like a game of musical chairs. The last folks standing or won't have a chair to sit down on, and they're going to get screwed. They're going to get screwed. They're going to be out of the game or they're going to have to sell in this house 10, 15 years to be able to balance out while paying a mortgage on a house that they cannot sell for what they owe on that mortgage. So this is literally gonna trap a lot of people in houses. But yeah, so this so-called good economy is all these crappy jobs that do not afford people the ability to drive a decent car, don't afford people the ability to live in a decent dwelling. Yeah, so this is the real economy, the revenge of the real economy. We're seeing the real economy impact because once again, I guarantee you that if you come back and check out the job, job numbers for February, they will be revised and they will be revised downward three, four months from now. I guarantee it. And then, because this is really interesting because it is purported that 7.5 million jobs was created under Biden, right? And only 2.7 million were created under Trump. I feel that there's a little fuckery in that because I feel that a lot of jobs that they're attributing to Biden are not new jobs. They're jobs that came back because they were lost due to the pandemic and then they came back as we worked our way out the pandemic. So I feel that a lot is trickeration any way you look at it. Because one of the things that I feel to keep Joe Biden's re-election uh, options open 
is universal basic income. And I feel that that's going to happen. I feel that they will do whatever they need to do to keep Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, because here's something else. Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, these are all very old people. They're on their way out one way or another. I mean, it's, we've only, Nancy Pelosi, I know is like 70 something and Joe Biden is 70 something. So they only have a few more years at best, only a few more years and they're out, they're out. And then we're gonna have a new regime. regime. I don't know if it's gonna be a Republican re re regime or a Democratic regime, I don't know. But new regime is coming very soon because like I said, age because you know it's going to catch up with him like George, the first bush president he's dead his wife is dead um but time no one beats father time father time is undefeated the wall is undefeated father time is undefeated no one beats father time all right so once again to update you to let you know our first training is 4 p.m sunday this is a live training and then I'm going to be adding training to the new platform and I got something a little special that I'll be adding. So there should be an email, if not today, tomorrow, going out to the B school and uh, corporate papers people. Cause like I said, I'm getting ready to put my foot in it and this training is going to cons cons consist of four modules. The first module being home economics and let's talk about home economics is so important. Uh, I realized almost $40,000 selling camera equipment, drones, uh, used mics that I spent a lot of money on, but I was able to get that money back. And this is the game. I was able to take tax deductions for buying that equipment and that money, it just flows into my bank account because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling nobody. I ain't telling nobody, but eBay will. eBay will tell them. So I'm gonna have to pay a little tax money on that, but that's cool, that's cool. So once again, I'm gonna teach you how to play the game from an economic standpoint, because what you need to do is create a foundation of financial literacy and financial behaviors and financial habits, and then start a business and then bring more money into your life. Because uh, I've seen it, you know, I saw it in the storage from days, people who are making crazy money and their storage auction ended up, their storage unit ended up going to auction because they couldn't pay the bill because they were spending too much money. So we're gonna talk about that and a lot more. So once again, this Sunday, 4 p.m., first live training. And we getting ready to do some work. I expect this is gonna take possibly nine months to complete. So let's get ready, let's get ready to rock and roll. So that's all I got for you guys today. I will talk to you later.